Nowadays, we can find inventory systems pretty much anywhere. After all, players need to store somewhere all the cheese, stone, fish, or just about anything else they find in their adventures. Since this is such a common system, I figured I might as well teach you how to make your own. When checking out games that have been released those past years, you may notice that in many cases their inventory systems boil down to the same principles. Though inventories vary visually from one game to another, we can notice that at their core, inventories are just a list of slots. And each slot contains an item type and some extra data such as the number of items in the slot. Aside from the visuals, what will change from one game to another is how the player can interact with the slots. In Minecraft, each slot has a specific position in the inventory, whereas in Borderlands, the order of the slots does not matter. In Stardew Valley, some slots define what the player is wearing, and adding chests in the world is equivalent to creating a new inventory the player can access when interacting with a chest. In Resident Evil 4, the players can optimize the space taken by their items to have access to more slots. The point I want to make, really, is that regardless of what an inventory looks like, what's going on behind the curtains can be the same from one game to another. So that's why the inventory system I'll be making will first of all allow multiple inventories. Secondly, it will allow moving items from one slot to another. And finally, it will allow special slots to be tied to gameplay, such as for toolbars or equipped items. Now keep in mind that this system will be designed to be generic so that it can be used for as many games as possible. So should you want to integrate it to your projects, you just have to check out the GitHub repository I put in the description. You can then change the code as you see fit so that the inventory acts the way you want it to. Let's start by writing a few unit tests. Writing those tests in advance will help us define the API we want for the inventory. And once the rest of the code is written, we'll know immediately if it works. The cases we'll be testing are adding and removing items from an inventory, moving items from one slot to another, and finally finding slots that meet specific criteria. Now that that is out of the way, let's create our inventory class. As you can see, this class is pretty much a fancy wrapper for a list of inventory slots with a couple of callbacks. By restricting the API as much as possible, I ensure that it can only be used the way I intend it to be used. Or at least I can reduce the number of ways I don't want it to be used. Next, let's move on to the inventory slot class. As you can see, this class only contains a reference to an inventory item and a quantity. Those properties are read-only because I don't want them to be edited manually. To change them, we must call some specific functions that may throw some exceptions in case of a failure. For example, the function move to is what you need to move items from one slot to another. That function does several checks to find out if the move is possible. If it isn't, it throws an exception. But if it is possible, we then need to know if the items are the same. If they are, we can simply increase the quantity in the destination slot. Otherwise, we swap the contents of both slots. The final class, the inventory item, is a scriptable object. That way, we can save individual item types as assets in Unity. The point of that class is only to contain some data. Currently, it has a string for its name and a sprite for its image, but further down the road we could imagine adding some properties, such as some statistics if the item is equipped. With those three classes we now have everything we need. And after a bit of fiddling I finally managed to get all the unit tests green. So that means that the core system is done. Now, let's try to display our inventory in several ways. First of all, let's display the inventory as a simple list. The first component we need is a component that will contain our inventory. In this case, I created the inventory holder component. As you can see, it's a fairly simple class. All it does is listen to a loot event to add items to the first available slot of the inventory. If there's no available slot, depending on its settings, it might create a new slot. This component can go pretty much on any entity that will have an inventory. That can be the player, chests, NPCs, just about any entity. In this case, I'll just dump it on an empty game object. To display the inventory, I used a basic UI panel with a component called Inventory UI Controller. When displayed, this component listens to some events sent by the inventory. 
and depending on the received events, the inventory UI controller will either spawn or unspawn some game objects for the slots. By adding a vertical layout group to the inventory UI game object, I don't even have to worry about the positions of the slots since they'll automatically be placed. To display the actual content of the slots, I use a component called Inventory Slot UI Controller. As you can see, that class listens to some events sent by its assigned inventory slot. When receiving those events, the component refreshes the name, image and quantity of the item. And there we have it, that's pretty much all the components we need, but you still may have a few questions. How is the inventory opened or closed? How are items added to the inventory? How are they removed? To answer all those questions, I rely on several events inside some channel scriptable objects. Those channels help me avoid dependencies between the various parts of the code. For example, to add items to inventory, all I do is plug the loot event invocation to this button's onClick event, and the inventory holder will receive that event and do the rest of the job. For more information on how those channels work, I recommend you check out Unity's video on game architecture with scriptable objects. It gives several tips on how you can use scriptable objects to improve your code. I'll of course provide a link to that video in the description. Now, let's try to have our inventory look like the one in Minecraft. What's awesome is that the code written for the first example can be reused for the Minecraft inventory. We don't have to change anything. All that's needed now is to handle picking up and dropping items with the mouse. To implement that, I created a new component called Inventory Cursor Controller. As you can see, that component handles its own inventory slot. And when the component detects a click on another slot, it will swap the content of that slot with the one on the cursor. And if we close the inventory while an item is held by the cursor, we send it back to the inventory via a loot event. On the same game object as the Inventory Cursor Controller, we will add an Inventory Slot UI Controller and a Follow Mouse component. The follow mouse component, as you may have guessed from its name, ensures that the game object follows the mouse. And with just those components, we are pretty much done with the code. All that's left are a few tweaks on our game objects. To look more like the Minecraft inventory, I replaced the vertical layout group on the inventory with a grid layout group. I also replaced the inventory slot prefab with a more fitting one. And we're done, we can now move items from one slot to another, just like in Minecraft. To go even further, we could create some extra slots for equipped gear or even for crafting. This can be an exercise for you to do. Let me know in the comments if you have some questions on that subject. So there we have it, you now know how to create your own inventory system. Better yet, that inventory system can work no matter how you want it to be displayed. This tutorial is the first of what I hope to be a long series of tutorials. I hope you enjoyed watching it. If there are some things you want me to change in the formula, or some elements you want me to clarify, please let me know in the comments. If you did enjoy this tutorial, please consider liking and subscribing for some similar content. In any event, have fun coding and see you next time!